can hear me? All is good? All right. Uh, yeah, so my name's Tom. Uh, I'm a postdoc at BU, and this kind of work uh, is in. There we go. I'm out here. Here? Here. <laughs> All right. Uh, good, good, good. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, so this is kind of a collaborative work that we've been doing with uh, people from Red Hat Research. And this is kind of a big project, and I'm going to just kind of focus on kind of a small part of it. Uh, so, so this project is called uh, Peaks, which is about designing a scheduler that is uh, for Kubernetes that is power efficient uh, and for sustainability. So kind of the overall uh, picture here is that this project is part of this uh, cloud native sustainability stack as part of Kepler. So, so Kepler is this joint work with IBM and Red Hat where they use EBF, eBPF probes uh, to provide a service where you can export like pod level metrics as, as, as the pod is running uh, in terms of, you know, things like instructions and cache misses and also most importantly uh, like like power so so here we're kind of talking about like CPU package power so it's usually a processor because that's kind of one of the mechanisms that they're, that they're able to exploit on, on modern hardware and kind of where uh, peaks fit in is that it is this scheduler we're trying to build using uh, Kepler right by using its uh, performance metrics to to do a better job of like scheduling pods uh, in Kubernetes, right? So, so kind of, so kind of, kind of the motivation for this project is that uh, currently uh, Kubernetes already provides multiple plugins for different kinds of schedulers. Uh, if you go look at the caps, there's a there's a bunch of different them, uh, a bunch of them on on, on GitHub, and and kind of uh, we don't really see one kind of targeted towards like power efficiency as a way to to schedule pods. And that's kind of where peaks fit in. And yeah, and, and kind of, so there's many overarching goals, but I'm just going to focus on like a very specific part of peaks uh, for this talk. Uh, yeah, so the goal is like, can we provide some sort of scheduling plugin to Kubernetes where we can, you know, optimize the overall power consumption of your, of your cluster while meeting some performance goals? Right? So, so, that, so that's how we're talking about lower power and better performance, or can we satisfy your performance? Um, right, so kind of like I mentioned, uh, Peaks has multiple different components. So, 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 so they have a, so currently we have like a pre-chained ML thing where they run various uh, benchmarks on your existing cluster and they build like a profile of the nodes. And then they kind of train a model to make predictions about like where you should place your job. That's kind of like the pre-trained uh, part of Peaks. Um, and kind of this talk is focused on another perspective where we're trying to build like an online feedback-based approach where as your application is running, can we dynamically tune the, the pod placements to improve its performance and also lower power? Um, yeah, so I'm gonna kind of talk, uh, give you like an overview picture of kind of how, how, how the overall workflow works right now. So this is still kind of mostly experimental. Uh, yeah, so it's a bit rough. Uh, so basically right now, you know, you have your classic Kubernetes deployment, right? So we're talking about just a single cluster. You have a bunch of nodes, and on top of them, you have your pods deployed right now. And, and right now, with the current setup of, of, of Peaks is that once you, have your, once you have your pods set up, right, basically at this point, they're kind of waiting for requests to come in. And at the same time, uh, Kepler is there running as a service on, on these nodes where it's able to basically export the, the power on, on the different nodes. So how it does that is that it basically exposes like a web, uh, web API as a service and you can make requests to it. And you can get a bunch of statistics about the different nodes. And the other aspect is that we are assuming that in the setup, there's some client somewhere running, running requests at, at these pods. And, and kind of given, and given these two measurements, right, as, as the client is running some requests, uh, it's going to give us some measure of, of like some performance here. So for example, latency or throughput, et cetera. And also combine that with, with like the power measurement of, of, of the existing cluster as the nodes are running. 
uh, could we feed it to some sort of like intelligent agent that's able to learn the behavior of the application, the way pods are, are deployed? And given that, can it make a better scheduling decision? So, so I'll talk a bit uh, more in a bit about what kind of reschedule I'm talking about here. And kind of this is, this is an entire feedback loop, right? So, so as the requests are being made, it progressively, maybe we can do a better job of, of shifting pods around, scaling them up or down, such that we are able to meet some target performance and also power uh, go. Right, so I'm gonna kind of just straight up just give like a very concrete experiment that we did. So this is one experiment right now. Um, so so this is our this is a this is a cluster setup that we created. Uh, they're basically just a bunch of nodes hooked up in a VLAN in a cluster somewhere. So there are six nodes. Um, uh, there's I call them S node and B node, mainly standing for small node and big node, mainly because they have very interesting characteristics, uh, right? So one thing you can look at is 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 the is the uh, the node of the process, right? So so the first one, the smaller one, is a 22 nanometer node. It was made in 2014, and the other one, the bigger one, is a 10 nanometer node, and that's pretty recent, 2021. Uh, and and you know and one of the one of the big things if you look at the spec of these nodes is like the thermal design point value of these right right so one of them is about like peak is like 85 uh, watts so there's so so there's two multiplied at that because there's two two sockets on the node and kind of what you're really seeing here is 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 the effect of like the end of dinner scaling right where we're not able to shrink the transistors down and and use the same uh, amount of power to cool them. So that's why you get these much, much larger TDP values in these higher end nodes. And the other aspect you might want that, that, that you might notice is also the embodied carbon, right? So the embodied carbon is the carbon cost to manufacture these nodes. And there's been a lot of recent research where they found that, you know, modern nodes take way more carbon to manufacture because of the cost it attaches to, to build these very like small transistors and stuff. So, so these are all very interesting factors to consider you know, when you're deploying your node, instead of being like homogeneous and high-end node, you might want to consider like a more heterogeneous node where there's different trade-offs here. And in this case, there's six nodes and, uh, and, and basically there's 256 CPUs total if you want to consider uh, that way. And also there's, there's like a big factor in cost, right? So with the small node, if you look on like Google or something, it's about $1,500 for like a refurbished one because they're not making these anymore. And for a newer one, you're spending upwards of 9,000 for one of these. So there's also kind of that, that price factor uh, when you consider uh, these two comparison points. Um, so, 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 so currently this is our, so this is my experimental cluster of nodes uh, that I'm gonna run Kubernetes on top of. And, and the workload I'm running is something called the uh, Hotel Reservation Benchmark from Death Star Bench. So this is just like an open source benchmark they wrote. It's a bunch of microservices trying to simulate like a hotel reservation uh, application. So basically, from the user, you, you make your request to a front end, and it's gonna hit a bunch of these services depending on what, what request you're making. So it's gonna be hitting some MongoDB and some MCACHD also. So, so in this case, there's about uh, 19 different pods in this, right? Different pod types, uh, and and in and in terms of performance here, I'm just I'm just caring about uh, P99 latency, right? So basically, given the nodes that I that I mentioned, uh, these are uh, I'm going to be running uh, these these pods on them. Uh, yeah. So kind of the the main motivation that we started in the beginning was. Is there a way we can exploit some of the low embodied carbon and low uh, power use of, of these older nodes rather than run everything on like the newer machines? And, and what are the trade-offs there, right? So for example, uh, in this experiment, what I did was I did two comparisons. So the blue line is where I use two of the high-end nodes and zero of the lower-end nodes. So as in, I'm using 128 CPUs. And the way I'm doing this is that I'm mapping one pod to one CPU, so, and I'm scaling this proportionally. So, so I'm saying that given 19 pods, I'm gonna scale every pod up proportionally to fit 120 CPUs on, on, on this cluster, right? And then, so on the graph there, you, you see the, so the blue line is the performance in that perspective. So after running this for about like three hours, 
it, it averaged about like 10, 10 seconds for its P99 latency. And then in the other, we have another experiment where we run with one of the high-end nodes and two of the lower-end nodes. So it's still 128 CPUs, because each of the lower-end nodes has 32 CPUs. And I basically redo the same experiment. And we see that there's a big gap in performance, right? So it's about two times worse at about 20 seconds for, for the P99 latency. But I think what's really interesting is also kind of the power uh, of, 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 of these two, two experiments. So for example, in, in, the, in the figure at the top right, we see the power consumption of the one where I use the two high-end nodes versus the one where I mix them up. So there's about like a 14% difference in power use, while there's also like a big 2x difference in performance, right? And kind of our thought was, is there a way I can play around with these two, two thresholds? Like what, how much can I get away with power? Like, do I need that much power? Do I need to, do I need to run everything on the two high-end nodes while, while, while still getting the, 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 the performance of, of the higher-end nodes, right? Is there something I can do better in terms of scheduling rather than doing it in a proportional fashion? Um, right, and, and also, yeah, and, and, that's kind of, and that's kind of where the, the next part of the work comes in, uh, where we're trying to kind of, instead of doing, scaling these pods up proportionally, can we use some sort of external uh, learning agent that will do a better job of figuring out how many pods it can scale up to? And the other aspect that might be interesting to consider is, you know, in Kubernetes, once you, when, when you launch a pod, you don't really select which node it goes to. It will do like a round robin distribution of the pods, right? So, so that's kind of the, the normal uh, situation. And we're also wondering, like, um, could you also move around pods to specific nodes to take advantage of power, for example? So in this case, so this is our uh, experimental setup. It's the same as before, right? So, it's, so here we're running about 128 pods of the hotel reservation benchmark. And, and our cluster consists of six, six nodes, right? So, so the four of the lower end nodes and two of the higher end nodes. And basically, the, uh, the, basically for, for the workload, the requests that are coming in, uh, it's gonna be hitting these pods and occasionally it's gonna be, uh, so the way this really works is that there's, there's, there's basically a, a, a workload generator. That's where the client is. It's gonna be generating work towards this. And occasionally, it's gonna be writing out what its P99 latency is. And, and while this is running, we have another pod that's, that's, that's basically our, our, our learning agent. And the learning agent is periodically reading what the power of, of, of the node is. And also, what is, what, what is the P99 latency uh, that, that the client is generating? And, and, and given these two pieces of information, we're gonna do something called like a multi-objective optimization. So we're using this open source tool called axe.dev. It's basically a, uh, it, it, it's a, it's a library for doing parameter tuning. So if you give it a bunch of different parameters and you give it some sort of reward function, it's gonna try to op, uh, minimize that, that reward. So in this case, uh, we're, we're telling it that I want you to minimize both the power and also minimize the P99 latency. And given that, it's gonna make a set of suggestions to scale the pods. And the way we do this is in our learning agent, uh, we have a custom way of talking to the Kubernetes API manager, and we can tell it that given this pod, I want, I want to scale the pods up and down. So I'm talking about scaling pods, I, I literally mean that we're gonna set the replica of the pod to some other number. And also the not, and, and then we also do another thing, which is that we decide, given, given this pod type, what is the node we're gonna put this at? So, so, you know, so basically it's gonna make a decision on how many replicas of this pod to, to launch and then how many nodes there are. And, but the limiting factor here is that we're still gonna just be limited to 128 CPUs out of the 256 CPU cluster. So, so it's not gonna try to use all the nodes for now. Right, so this is, this, this is our experimental setup. Uh, and, and, kind of, and kind of the graph that I'm showing you here so every single dot here is a single configuration that, our, that, that the learning agent found. And when I mean configuration, I mean that for every single one of these pod types, there's a specific number of replicas that it picked. And, and for each of these replicas, what node it's gonna be placing them at. Right, 
So, so effective, what we found is that it's able to really aggressively increase the performance. So compared to the uh, proportional one using the two high-end pods, it's able to find a configuration where it did about five times better in terms of P latency while using the same amount of power where the best case where it didn't use the two high-end nodes, right? And, 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 and kind of given this, we, we, were, we were wondering like, uh, okay, so what is, so what, what, are, what, are, what are some of the structure that it found in terms of, of the node? Like what, what, what is, uh, is there some, some factor in terms of the pod replicas and where, where they are placed that, that, that gave this result? Uh, let's see. Yeah, so, so here's a bit, uh, so here's more like I'm trying to kind of understand the data. Uh, so what we did was we, we focused on a small region of the data points. So where the red circles are. So, so these are points where it had the best performance. It also had some of the best uh, uh, power use, right? So, so there's about four points there. Um, in this case, the way I'm presenting this results, I'm gonna kind of explain it very slowly. So, so there's four data points. So each of these data points consists of some configuration that gave us you know, the best performance along with a very low power, right? So, so, so that's what the color coded here is for. So, so the blue one was a configuration that gave us about, it, it used about 159 watts to run this work uh, up until 167 for the red. And, and, and here, what I'm showing on the graph is, is the number of MongoDB pods that are used. Like I mentioned before, this, this hotel reservation benchmark has a bunch of different pods, right? So there's some memcached pods, some Mem uh, MongoDB pods. So I'm just showing the MongoDB pods for now. And, and for each of these, on the y-axis, I plot out what is the number of pods it's selected you should scale to. So, so for the MongoDB pods, it effectively said that you, know, you, should, you shouldn't really replica this a lot because it really didn't seem to implement, uh, uh, what's that, in, interact with the performance. So, so in this case, in almost all cases, in, in, the, in the best case for performance, I found you only really need, need one, one or two pods for the MongoDB. And also, uh, in each of these bars, uh, I tried to differentiate the node that the pod is scheduled on. So, so if there's a star on it, that means it scheduled that pod on one of the lower end nodes. And if it's a circle, it used the higher end node. Right. So, so, this one, so this one, we see that it's, it's kind of a mixed bag. It's mostly a stars, as in lower end nodes, and then you only use one or two of the MongoDB pods. Um, so next, I'm gonna show for, for the other pods. So these are the other ones, right? Uh, so on the top left, we have the memcached D pods. And on the lower right, it's like whatever pods are left over. I think these are like the user-facing pods. So kind, of, so kind of a few interesting behaviors, although it's, it's not fully concrete yet. Uh, we noticed that there's always kind of one pod where it really aggressively scaled up the number of replicas. So for example, in the green case, right, it scaled um, that, that reserved memcached D pod to about, it said, okay, you should, you should spawn 30 of these replicas. And also for the other colors, you also notice that in some of these pods, it decided to aggressively scale this very high also, like 20, 40. So that's, that's at least one commonality that I see from this data, where like at some point they decided that you should, you should try to scale one of these really aggressively. And then the other thing you might notice is that uh, for all of these ones where it's scaled very aggressively, it always placed them on like the, 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 the lower performance node, right? So with the higher performance node, perhaps some of them, it, it, did, it did still use some of them, but, but, but it's not the ones where it's scaled uh, very aggressively which seems to suggest that maybe, maybe for like the higher end node, you, you don't really need to run like, you don't really need to run something that's that aggressive or, or, or maybe there's, some, some, there's something about the, that, that specific pod where it, 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 it seems to work better on the, on, on the higher end node. Yeah, so I mean, I'm trying to uh, like explain why this learning agent did this. And <laughs> I think it just needs more like experimental to, to validate uh, exactly why, but this is just a, a start right now. Um, so, so kind of what the so kind of the takeaway message is that what we found is that using this kind of online learning, multi-objective optimization approach, is able to really aggressively 
find like configurations of both the number of pod replicas and the node such that you get really, really, really improved performance while also saving energy. So for example, in our case, what we found is that the best case that we found where it used the least energy was about 109 watts. It used three of the smaller nodes and one of the high-end nodes, right? That's also an interesting choice because it didn't pick two of the lower end nodes, it picked three. We seem to suggest that maybe it spread out the load among all three nodes versus packing everything on two nodes, right? Which seems to suggest that maybe it's better you run three, three lower end nodes at some low to medium intensity and run something else on the higher end nodes, right? So, so that's an interesting point also. And, and this is also a graph just to compare, right? So, so with the peaks one, we're able to really aggressively improve that P99 latency uh, compared to kind of what I showed earlier. Because you know, if you if you didn't know, if you if you if you were to just like say, I want to scale this up to 128 nodes, right? How do I really do this? And this is one approach that can that that that, that seems to really work. Um, right. So this is nice and all, but there's also a few kind of notes I want to mention, and also caveats about this approach, right? So every single experimental dot that I mentioned took about like five minutes to run to to generate that configuration. Uh, specifically, what we found is that when you're really doing this aggressive moving of pods and scanning up and down, it takes a few minutes for Kubernetes to do it, right? So we really had to like wait, wait, wait uh, quite a while for, for, for the node, for basically once you, basically every single experiment, the entire cluster changes in terms of how many replicas it, it, it spawns and where, where the replicas are spawning, right? So that, that entire thing changes also. So, so this is also an interesting question, you know, because like, you know, pod, like pod migration is still not really fully implemented. You know, it's a very good question that if, if we actually, if the Kubernetes has like some sort of pod migration feature, maybe, maybe this will be a much more effective way of doing it. Um, and also some of the performance results I showed, like they've been also like remarked in other work also. So it's not really that new to me, but I think the, the very novel thing is that, you know, you can actually do this by not using all the high end nodes. You can actually mix up your, your, your cluster. And obviously the last point is that um, this is still kind of very, very, very open work. So there's a lot of interesting questions here uh, that we're just starting to think about. Like, can we actually reduce the power frequency even more? Um, I think it's possible because currently, you know, a lot of people are doing like power frequency tuning on these nodes too, right? So you can aggressively lower the CPU clock on, on these nodes to basically save more power. And could you play with that also? Uh, also, there's, you know, also it might be interesting to compare with like actual auto scalers that people have released as products. Uh, although I'm not sure if they support like node level auto scaling in that sense. So that might be interesting also. Also, obviously, how would it, how would it generalize across other kind of Kubernetes workloads, right? Uh, the other thing is like, what if we have multiple computing, competing workloads, right, in this cluster? Because right now I'm just running one workload. It's 256 nodes, right? Half of them are idle. What if you have like 10 different things there? Can it figure out some placement? Or does this, is this way too complex for, for that case? Uh, right, and then, so right now we're just scheduling CPU, right? So we're just one pod, one CPU. Obviously we wanna, in the future, consider, you know, if you have a GPU, you know, GPUs can report power to, so that might be interesting. You can play, play some stuff with like virtualized GPUs and stuff. That could be interesting too. Uh, and also right now, the, the power metric that we're using is like the CPU package power. So it's not that realistic. You know, obviously we wanna look at rack level power or if there's a way, I know on like, uh, like ARM or ARM processors, they have like per core power. That could be interesting too. That could be something we, could, we can look at in this case. Uh, but it's still just a lot of like open questions of future work. This was still, so this is just a one experiment we did that had some interesting results. Uh, yeah, so that's it for me. Uh, if you have any questions, I'd be glad to take it. Yeah. You, you're talking about the, uh, you build an IL agent, right? To yeah kind of help to um, uh, automate the, the uh, schedules that, uh, to achieve the low power efficiencies right, in the end. Yeah, yeah. Um, what is the input, by the way? The input to it? To the, to the learning agent? Yeah. Uh, it's basically, 
for every single pod type that I mentioned, so the 19 pods, uh -huh. there's a number attached to it, which is how many replicas of this pod should be. Uh -huh. And then for each, for each of that pod type, what is the node that it should schedule it on? So right now it knows, well, it's hard coded right now. I'm saying that, oh, there are six nodes in this cluster. For each of these pod types, you pick one of the nodes, and that's it. So, so, so that's the input to it. What's the rewards? So the reward is, is the P99 and the power, basically. So as part of the experiment is that uh, after, so after you make that suggestion or configuration change to Kubernetes, mm -hmm. uh, it's, we, we have to wait five minutes, basically, for everything to settle. And then we start gathering what the power is and what the P99 is. And, then, and, that's, and, that's, and we use that as a reward. So, so we tell it that you know, just, just minimize P99 and minimize power. So, um, and you get all the P99 and the power stats from, uh, uh, and then use that one to calculate the rewards, right? No, the, the way, no, you, you, I, I, I straight up use that value they gave me as, as the reward. So, and I tell it just minimize that value. So oh. if it's 100, 159 watts, I'm saying that's your, that's your power, and your P99 is like 10 seconds or something, that's your, that's your P99. And it tries to minimize both of them. Okay, I see. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. So about uh, generalize the, uh, for more workloads, like currently it's experimental uh, for like one set of application. Yeah. And basically the input requirements, as you just mentioned here, is like uh, how many uh, pores how many replicas that, mm -hmm. like uh, in our daily case, like uh, let's say that is uh, either the YAML, the, the Helm chart, the Node, mm -hmm. several applications, yeah, and yeah. how many replicas, like uh, so is, go is there gonna be some recipe that like if I just give you uh, like a Helm chart that it could be a certain assumption that like uh, which kind of configuration, like how many nodes, like yeah. uh, for fit for like a, this situation or that's the question. Yeah, yeah, I mean that's, I would say that that's kind of where we're headed towards. Uh, so yeah, we haven't, I, I mean I haven't run that experiment yet. I don't know if it will work at all <laughs> if I run multiple different things competing and whether it figures out a placement. But that's where we want to go. And also, yeah, like, and also kind of like you said, how do we generalize this where, because really the reward is, you know, power and that, and I don't know, yeah. So obviously that's the other thing. And how do you generalize this, and how do you build a real system out of maybe this idea that, you know, you can plug this into your Kubernetes and your existing cluster, and can it figure out over time? Um, I think the issue right now is the time it takes to converge. Like, in that experiment that I showed you, uh, I ran it for 12 hours, so it was overnight. Uh, obviously, if your load, if your request rate changes throughout the day, also, right? I don't know how it's gonna in, uh, affect that. Also, there's, and then, yeah, and obviously, one of the big issues is like, let's say you make that configuration change to your cluster, you know, you you have, you have to, you have to like terminate your existing pods and scale them up again, right? Like, how much is that gonna inter impact your existing work and stuff? <laughs> wow. Maybe, maybe it needs to be like a slow progression throughout the cluster, like slowly modifying it rather than all at once. I would say, yeah, but but yeah, but I think those are all like open questions that that we're we're, we're gonna want to tackle. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yep, thank you.